Hi everyone, welcome to my home on what for me is Sunday morning, but depending where you are, it could be evening or depending when you're watching it, it could be Monday um, or another day. So anyway, welcome to my home and uh, oh, by the way, I just bought some new art and I would love to show you like this one behind me. Uh, the art is by Cameron Gray and that's C-A-M-E-R-O-N-G-R-A-Y. And this one is called Prayer to Mother Earth. I just loved it. I just fell in love with it. I bought a few pieces by him because he's so like um, esoteric, angelic. I don't know how to describe it, but this just, it's, yeah, Prayer to Mother Earth. And then there's another one here that um, reminded, that um, was like, it was like having a near death. This person is having a near death experience. You can see him rising up, having an out of body experience, rising out of the world and into the other world. So I loved it. So I just, I just was introduced to his work very recently, fell in love with it. So anyway, just thought I'd share that with you because, because different things really move me emotionally. Art moves me, music moves me. Um, all you know certain types of movies and words and certain things I read will move me and so I wanted to speak a little bit about a little bit more about what it means to be an empath or what it means to be sensitive so <clears throat> um, we all are we, we um, know what our five senses are you know the sense of sight the sense of hearing the sense of smell the sense of taste and the sense of touch. Those are our five senses. But one of the things that we don't take into consideration is how things make us feel. Because you can hear something, but how does what you're hearing make you feel? If it's a loud noise, it makes you panic. If it's uh, gentle music, it brings out different emotions in different people. Some music can make you feel joy. Some sounds make you feel joy and some sounds can make you, uh, can kind of be jarring. Um, even things like when you make choices at, uh, of work or at school, when you're making career choices and people only ask you things like, um, is this a good career choice? Will you be able to make money from it? Will it bring jobs, uh, security, blah, blah, blah. No one asks you, how does it make you feel? How does it make you feel? And so the thing is, what I realized that with sensitive people, with empaths and with highly sensitive people, the feeling part of it is super important. It's more important than how something looks, how something sounds. It's, it's all about how does it make you feel? And we don't pay enough attention to that. And so that is what I feel, I feel, because I tend to say that a lot, I feel blah, 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 I feel, and I didn't realize that the word feel is very strong in my language. Um, some people say, oh, I think, it's default for them to say, I think, blah, 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 blah. I tend to say, I feel, and I say that without even thinking. So one of the things that I realized is that um, we don't pay enough attention to the way we feel. And this world, our reality, and the way that we've created everything, whether it's our education systems, our government systems, and all of these things, they have been created without feeling and without considering that we are dealing with humans who have feelings. We've taken all the other things into account, you know, things like money, capitalism, finance, um, job security. We've taken into account um, uh, like, uh, you know, whether something sounds good, looks good, uh, and all of these things, but we haven't taken into account how these things make people feel, which is why nobody even thinks about it when we have news bulletins all day long that are just blasting fear at us because no one's saying, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Think about how you're making all the viewers feel all day, every day. But nobody questions that. Nobody thinks that. But it's time for us to change that and to shift that. And I want to start what I call an empath evolution. Like literally, or it could be an empath revolution, like a movement um, where people start taking that into consideration more and more. Because here's what I think. 
empaths and highly sensitive people, you feel what's happening in the world. You get weighed down by stuff that's happening outside. And that's and, and we tend to say that, oh, it's because empaths absorb the energies that are outside. And empaths feel like there's something wrong with them. And they feel like um, they need to change and they're broken somehow. But what if it's the other way around? What if the reason that you feel everything is actually because your energy field, your aura is actually much larger than the majority of the population. Because one thing we know is that empaths are not the majority of the population. We're in the minority. And I've often said this, please check out all my past videos, where I've said this world seems to be created by five sensory beings, four five sensory beings. So those of us who rely more on our sixth sense and who are empaths and sensitive, we find it really hard to navigate because it's like we have to suppress that sense or deny that sense and we're the ones that are often made to feel like we're wrong or we're weak you know because it's like you're told uh, grow a thicker skin don't be so sensitive especially if you're male if you're male you're told boys don't cry um, and also we're, we're told things like you won't you won't be able to get ahead in the world unless um, uh, you know un unless you become more ruthless or you grow a thicker skin now for sensitive people for empaths it's really hard to do that. It almost makes you sick in the body when you have to do that, when you have to deny your sixth sensory self and when you have to grow a thicker skin or be more ruthless or suppress your tears. Um, it actually makes you sick in the body, um, which is what happened to me. So what I am thinking and what occurred to me is what if empaths are actually humans 2.0? What if in actuality, empaths have it right and empaths is the way forward and not the other way around as we have been led to believe? What if in fact empaths have a greater energy field, which is why we feel things more? In other words, we're not weaker. We actually have something that other people don't and we have it in spades, we have it stronger. So in other words, our energetic field, our energy, the size of our energy is much bigger than that of most people. So we have a greater ability to feel empathy, compassion, sensitivity towards our fellow humans, towards the planet, towards everything. Maybe this is actually the, the, the way we need to be moving toward as opposed to the way we need to be suppressing and moving away from. Do you see what I mean? All this while, while we've been led to believe that we are the ones who are wrong, maybe we are actually the way showers and we're actually the ones who are part of evolution to take the human evolution to the next stage because empaths have a stronger ability to feel what other people are feeling and maybe that is a strength and not a weakness. I speak a lot about this in my book, Sensitive is the New Strong, because I strongly feel that it is time for empaths and sensitive people to really embrace it and to really know inside that you are the human 2.0. What you have is a strength and not a weakness. What you have is something that will take human evolution to the next stage, because the way we were before with the lack of empathy, the way that we develop our, our nations, our countries, our governments, our priorities as a race with no empathy towards others or the planet is one that will lead us to our own destruction. The way that we spend all our time, our money, our resources on developing weapons of mass destruction uh, instead of spending our time, our money and resources, even as, in, as nations, instead of spending all that to feed each other, we tend to use all our resources to kill each other. Um, it's, we're really not, we're really imbalanced and we really just, um, <clears throat> how would I say, we, we really just completely tipped over to the side of a patriarchal planet where only masculine values have been embraced. There is nothing wrong with masculine values. There is nothing wrong with feminine values but you need both. What is wrong with our planet is that it is lacking in feminine values. And 
And so I know that a lot has already been done in moving feminine values forward. However, um, it's still lacking because one of the things I've noticed is that when women go for powerful positions, they believe that they need to become more like men to have those positions. Again, it's nobody's fault. It's just the way things have happened. Awareness changes this. And whenever I say it's nobody's fault, what I mean is I'm not trying to attack or blame anyone, but by becoming aware that this is what's happening, that's how we can change it. Women need to embrace their femininity. We need to embrace it and we need to take that into our workplace, into our world, and we need to be proud of that. It's not about suppressing it. Women also have masculine power within them, just like men have masculine and feminine power. And we need to actually meld them together like yin and yang, because it takes both. One cannot live without the other. We have suppressed one side for far too long. So how would we start an empath evolution? And I've been wondering that myself. And I think for a start, I would just like to just share messages, you know, which is what I've been doing, um, to just keep talking about it, just keep talking about it on social media and on, uh, on all my social media platforms. And I, would, I just want to keep talking about it. And if you're with me, and if you share what I feel, and if you're an empath, and if you're a sensitive person, and if you have felt you don't fit into the world, and you need more, and you want to feel more, that actually you are very much key. You are needed for our future. You're actually, if you're an empath and a sensitive person, um, I would want you to know that you are actually needed for our future evolution more than ever today more than ever before. Um, if you have been feeling, in fact, that the world is getting harder um, and that you are, have had to suppress all your sensitivity, if you've been feeling all those things, I would love for you to, um, to, to hit like in my video or uh, hit subscribe, depending on where you're watching this, and to follow me because I promise I will continue to give you information to, um, to help you in this but also for us to kind of bring this awareness about, just bring it about in this world so we can make a little, our own little um, silent revolution or evolution on, on changing the world. Um, sometimes people ask me that, sometimes people say to me that it's necessary to get out there and get angry at what's happening because that's how you change the world. I agree. It is necessary to go out there and do things to change the world. But here's where I personally have a personal conflict. Um, and it's my conflict and I'm open to hearing from people as to how to resolve it within me. One of the things I feel is that um, emotions like anger, although it is important to express them, absolutely important to express them, we need to channel emotions like anger anger in a healthy way. Um, we shouldn't be expressing it out at other people and getting angry at other people. We need to channel it in a healthy way, <clears throat> um, in a healthy way that creates change. It creates change within ourselves and it creates awareness in other people so that they may change. I find that when anger is lashed out when people go and are destructive and violent and lash out in anger and then justify it by saying, I needed to be angry. I needed to go and rip down all those stores and break all that glass because it's, it's my protest to what's happening in the world. <clears throat> what I'm, what that, that kind of thing makes me a little bit sad because um, it backfires on us. And that is what I call masculine energy. And it's unbridled masculine energy, but we need the mix of the masculine and the feminine. The masculine energy is about, oh my God, I feel angry about what's happening right now. But then you bring in the feminine of, okay, how can I express it in a healthy way that will evolve us, but not harm us? So when there's too much masculine, you get the anger, you get, you, you, get the, you get the feeling that something needs to be done to change this. But when masculine energy goes too far, 
it becomes destructive. With feminine energy, it can be too passive. With too much feminine energy, you're like, oh, I'm good with things the way they are. Oh, let it be. And things never change. So you need the masculine. But then where you need the feminine is let's do it in a way that's not destructive. Let's, let's use that anger and fuel it and create something better. So that's how you meld masculine and feminine energy together. And that would be my answer for, for people who say, yeah, but I need to go out and fight and la la la. No, use that anger, channel it, channel it and create something better. Um, so I was feeling over the last couple of years, uh, even, even before the whole pandemic and everything, I was actually feeling like the world had got too much for me and the world had got crazy and, and so on. And uh, I was finding it harder and harder to live in this world. And so I was feeling that, that kind of uh, anger towards what was happening and why aren't people more sensitive and why? And so I used that to create what I'm calling my empath evolution, but I used it to create an online sanctuary. And so I'd like to just tell you a little bit more about my online sanctuary right now. My online sanctuary is an online platform. So originally I had wanted to create some real places, venues, brick and mortar venues, but the pandemic kind of changed my plans. I, I started before the pandemic by having actual retreats so that we could meet in person and spend days together and time together, like days, weeks. And then I thought, oh my gosh, I must have actual venues, actual places where people can come to, um, where people can connect with like-minded people, where people even going through um, physical illnesses can come and get, get help. Because this is the other piece that annoys me and makes me really angry about the world, is that when you are super sensitive, when you are super empathic and you struggle with living in this world, it is bound to cause physical things because when you feel things viscerally, your body is affected, your cells are affected because your energy is affected. So it affects you physically. But our current medical paradigm does not take that into consideration. Our current medical paradigm is very aggressive. It's very masculine in nature, very. And it's not suited for everyone. I'm not saying don't go see a doctor. You might have an amazing doctor. Please see your doctor. Please don't stop seeing your doctor. But what I am saying is that as a whole paradigm, as a model, the way it's structured, it puts profits before anything else. It puts drugs before anything else. It doesn't take into consideration our emotional state, our energy state. But those are so important for a sensitive person and an empath. This is why I was thinking we need to have a space. We need to create an alternate world, an alternative reality. So at first, before the pandemic, I was actually thinking in terms of a physical place. But after the pandemic struck, I had to shift my thinking and I thought, OK, it's going to have to be a virtual place where we can all meet online. So now we have created this virtual place and we call it the sanctuary. And so I want to read a little bit. Um, from the home page of my sanctuary um, and we will be including the link with this video of my sanctuary so that you can just go look at uh, so you can go see what it's about but the sanctuary it is a membership platform um, and it is actually a home for empaths and highly sensitive people it's for the gentler souls of the world the gentler souls of the world need a place to play, learn, and shine. Empaths and sensitive people have been sidelined far too long, and it's time to create new opportunities for all types of empaths to step forward with confidence. My online sanctuary will provide opportunities for all kinds of empaths to explore their nature, appreciate their qualities, and adjust the traits that hold them back from being truly happy and self-loving. Entering the sanctuary, empaths and sensitive people and those who wish to understand more about empaths will experience unconditional love and support in a community of fellow empaths who are also seeking to explore, understand, uplift and embrace their empathic nature. Empaths will enter my spiritual home 
which offers uplifting conversations, lessons, meditations, exercises, and friendships of which will help members exercise their intuitive and empathic muscle. So on that note, I would love for you to check out my sanctuary. And even if you don't join, I'm sure I will see you again soon on another video. Thank you so much for tuning in and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.